Genesis 48, 16 is a very interesting verse. So you have the angel there. Uh, note that the angel blesses uh, yeah. people. And the point here is that the name of the father used as a authority. Deuteronomy 18, 1 to 5. So we're looking at the name in the name of. For Adonai, your God, chose the tribe of Levi out of all your tribes to minister in the name of God. See how the tribe here of Levi takes a, the, the role of a mediator? And this language, so simply put, the, the point being here, and we have Deuteronomy 18 later on, a prophet speaks in the name of. So it simply means in the authority of or in the place of. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the reason I'm going through this is because we, we get uh, comments a lot and misconceptions and uh, mis misunderstanding uh, regarding the name, especially with this so-called sacred name movement are very strong on, you know, you have to say the name of God or you have to say the name Yeshua. You cannot say Jesus and so on. I don't think they're quite understanding the context of what in the name of uh, represents in the Bible. So these are just very good examples of of what in the name of means. The power authority of your name. So that's basically the, the parallel there. The power of your name by the authority of that name. And the last one there, Colossians 3.17, do everything in the name of, or in the authority of, in the represent, as representatives, representatives of the Lord Jesus, thanking God through him, and there's the uh, mediator word once again. Now, because of that, then we come on the calling on the name of. So what's that mean, calling on the name of someone? Well, we have Isaiah 44. First Peter 1 Peter 1.17, call on the Father. First Corinthians 1, 1 and 2, Paul to the church of God in Corinth, together with all those everywhere who call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So this is an interesting progression right, of calling on the name of someone as representing that someone. So when you call on the, on the Father, obviously, God the Father. And then, obviously, we call on the name of our Lord Jesus uh, for help, for, for anything, really. Uh, let's see. And this takes us to prayer language. So prayer to Jesus as the supreme representative uh, sorry, for supreme mediator of God, is not forbidden in Scripture. Obviously not. If, if we're petitioning, if we're calling on the name of Jesus, it's not because he's God, it's simply because he's the mediator, he's the representative, he's, he's the go-to guy. Jesus repeatedly <coughs> promises that whatever his disciples ask in his name, the Father will give them even promising that he himself will do whatever his disciples ask in his name, so that the Father may be glorified. And he adds, if you ask me for anything in my name, I will do it. Requests to the Father in Jesus' name are of a piece with a request to Jesus himself. The common factor is in his name. I think people called on Moses a lot. So we have uh, some good quotes here I thought uh, you could add to your arsenal or your little toolbox. According to Hebrew usage, in the name of means in the possession and protection of. The use of name is a common one in the Greek translation of the Old Testament and the papyri for power or authority. Yep. Name can refer to authority by which something is done. That's what we mean by the expression in the name of the law or in the name of the king. In Ephesians 1.21, the apostle speaks of government, authority, power, and lordship and every name named. <laughs> Just in case. And every name 